Many of us collectors dream about finding attic fresh trains that are very old, mostly intact and in decent condition, and which include some rare items. Here's a lot of someone's Ives trains and German made accessories that have been together since around 1915 for 108 years. Believe it or not, this is not my greatest attic fresh find, but it is a distant second. All these pieces have some rust and paint flaking, but this is not so much play wear as time and storage deterioration. This stuff is in pretty good shape for surviving 108 years. None of these items make up a catalog set from that time, so they may have been purchased individually. First is the 3217 locomotive, a common Ives engine. It's a variation with the pilots screwed on instead of cast into the body. As usual, the lettering on the side has been worn off by fingers holding it by the cab. It has no cast iron pieces broken off, very important. It has some rust spots, but it runs. Next are a couple of 60 series T-Truck cars, also common in this olive color. Yeah, these are 108 years old, but even in the 1910s, electric trains were becoming popular. And there are a lot of common items from that time. These cars have different couplers from the engine, which leads me to think they did not come with the engine in as a set. But uh, the couplers do have slots for the engine's hook couplers. Now with the 250 series freight cars, we get into the rare and interesting territory. This number 54 gondola with the green wood grained lithography is according to the Ives Train Society website a rare variation from about 1915. So it still has the kids uh, wood dowel logs in it. Uh, collectors think gondolas are boring but the kids really love them because they could put stuff in them. Most 56 cabooses have Pennsylvania lines up here on the letter board like this. This one from the attic fresh find has the Ives railway lines instead. Again this is a rare variation made only for a short time around 1915. Now to the track. I've said in other videos that most old toy train track is for all practical purposes garbage. In order to not be garbage old track has to one be a rare type of track and just as important, to not be all rusty and bent. This is rare early Ives electric track. The center rail is a tube that's mounted on these round insulators. Another thing that dates this stuff to around 1915 is this terminal section. It has two terminals on each side. The design of this was changed sometime between 1915 and 1917 so that the later sections have only one terminal on each side. You connected two wires from your power source up to this side and two wires from this control switch, this heavy iron control switch, to this side. Moving on to the accessories, these accessories are not Ives but made in Nuremberg, Germany. No surprise, these inexpensive German accessories and trains were imported in great quantities before World War I and even in lesser quantities after World War I. They were shown in Sears and Montgomery Ward catalogs. Even American train makers included German-made stuff in their catalogs. These German imports were nice and more varied than what Americans had at the time, and they cost 25 to 50 cents each. First is this crossing diamond. This was definitely made by Bing of Nuremberg, but oddly enough, it has no Bing trademark. 99% of Bing stuff has trademarks, either the GBN diamond or the later BW mark. Next is this incomplete lithograph building. It's missing a base with a wind-up clockwork to ring this bell and it would be tripped by the train passing by. There was a little lever sticking out here under the track and the train wheels would push it down and that would ring the bell. This is definitely a Nuremberg maker. I would say KBN which stands for Karl Boop of Nuremberg. Lastly, and this is what made me buy this lot, it's a direction indicator. It's a very European piece of equipment altered for the American market. 
It has the names of American cities on it. Most interesting is the inclusion of New Orleans and Pittsburgh. You don't often see these two cities on these things. This was definitely designed by George Corret of Nuremberg, but Corret went out of business in 1914. Some of his tooling was sold to other companies, including the aforementioned Carl Boop. So if this wasn't actually made by Corret, it's Carl Boop using Corret dies. Finally is this little box which may identify the owner or someone related to the owner. It was mailed by the Curtis Publishing Company of Philadelphia, which published the famous Saturday Evening Post, to a party at the Walkover Boot Shop in Auburn, New York. Walkover Boot Shops were an early chain of shoe stores. A hundred years ago, magazines sometimes gave away train stuff as premiums. Was a train item sent in this little box? Well, what's in it now... As I was saying, what's in it now are the connectors that hold the tra track sections together. So I can set this all up and see how it runs. Okay, so I set up some of the track. There's no need for you to watch the painful process of me discovering that the engine pulling cars will not make it around the oval once without derailing. The engine will make it around by itself most of the time with the usual Ives engine behavior that it will fly off the track if you don't keep your fingers on the dial constantly adjusting. Some of the curves have become distorted. It's easy to squeeze this lightweight track when you're pulling it apart. I wouldn't run this set on this track that came with it anyway. I expect old track to have problems and I have boxes and boxes of newer, better, problem-free track. Still, I will keep this track with this find and hope that an Auburn, New Yorker's trains that have been together since 1915 will stay together when it's time for me to leave them behind.